Hey everyone, it's Mr. Veve, and this lesson is on the domains and kingdoms. So let's get right into it with our first key concept. The three known domains are further divided into six kingdoms. So let's look at first what a domain is. Now, if you remember, it's the largest taxon that we have. And scientists have actually grouped organisms into three different domains based on analyzing their rRNA, or their ribosomal RNA. So we've got bacteria, archaea, and eukaryota, or eukarya as it's sometimes called. So those are our three domains that we're going to look at, and a few kingdoms that fall into those as well. So the first domain, archaea, has a kingdom within it, also called archaea. Now these are probably similar to the very first cells that actually formed on Earth. These are all unicellular or single-celled organisms. They're all prokaryotes, and they all reproduce asexually. Now, they're not terribly exciting, um, but some of the things they do have are uh, cell walls that do not have peptidoglycan. Now, that's different from another domain that we're going to talk about. And they are autotrophs, meaning they make their own energy, and the way they do that is through chemosynthesis. So the where, where you're going to find most of these uh, archaea, um, archaea bacteria are in hot springs or underwater vents like hydrothermal vents. Uh, they really like harsh environments, and that's where they thrive best. So that's very different from the domain bacteria now, which is also kingdom bacteria. These are single-cell organisms that are prokaryotes. Their cell walls do have peptidoglycan in them, and uh, when uh, scientists create antibiotics, they actually take advantage of this fact that these bacteria have peptidoglycan because certain antibiotics will actually attack that aspect of the bacteria. Now these can be either autotrophic or heterotrophic, meaning they can get their food from eating some, uh, some other organisms or they can make their own. And they can also reproduce asexually or sexually through binary fission or conjugation, respectively. Now a couple, just a little diagram here to show you where we can find bacteria on the human body. There's all different types of bacteria on our skin or in different areas of our body. And if you just look at this, you can kind of see with the chart down there, um, all types of, uh, of Staphylococcus bacteria and cyanobacteria and other sorts of things. So just a neat thing to look at in case you were curious. So let's talk more about bacteria here. These guys are not found in harsh environments, but they're pretty much found everywhere else. Some of them may cause disease. Some of them may actually help out the organisms that they are on, uh, on a part of. Um, they play an important role in a lot of the ecosystems that they thrive in. They, uh, they are actually decomposers and nitrogen fixers, if you remember the nitrogen cycle. So you have uh, denitrifying and nitrifying bacteria in the soil that actually helps fix nitrogen, especially um, in the root nodules of certain plants and, uh, and actually helping that in the soil. Uh, so if we want to go to the next domain here, we're going to go to eukarya. This is the big one. These are uh, four different kingdoms here that we're going to look at, plants, animals, fungi, and protists. Now that's just a big tree uh, of, of looking at the uh, domain eukarya. So let's first start with kingdom plantae in domain eukarya. Now everything in eukarya is eukaryotic, so no surprise there. So if we look at plants, everything there is multicellular, eukaryotic. The cell walls in plants are made of cellulose. Uh, plants, as we know, are autotrophic. They make their own energy, uh, make their own food. And there is sexual or asexual reproduction if you look across all the different types of plants in the kingdom. Uh, this next kingdom within eukarya is fungi, and these are multicellular organisms also, except for yeast. Yeast is a single cell organism. They are eukaryotes. Their cell walls are made of chitin. They are heterotrophic, and they also can re reproduce sexually or asexually. So it just depends on what kind of fungus you have. Now, fungi also includes lots of different types of things like mushrooms that you've uh, normally see and no doubt seen uh, uh, in the environments around you. So uh, the next one is animals, or animalia, the kingdom animalia within the eukarya domain. These are multicellular uh, organisms. They're eukaryotic. You and I, humans, are part of kingdom animalia. We do not have cell walls. We are heterotrophic. We cannot make our own uh, food through photosynthesis. Uh, uh, animals, all animals reproduce sexually, and it's not just cats and dogs and pandas, there's all types of things that are involved in uh, the animal kingdom. So we have uh, everything from these different types of worms to sea creatures to turtles and uh, everything in between. So animal is quite a large kingdom here. Uh, and finally we go with protists. So the kingdom protista, these are either multicellular or single cell organisms. They are eukaryotes. 
cell wall optional. Some of them don't necessarily have a cell wall. Uh, and they are also either heterotrophic or autotrophic. You will find both types in protists. And they also reproduce sexually or asexually. So it seems like they kind of have uh, some, some characteristics of a lot of different other kingdoms. Uh, so that's kind of the point here as we look at some other protists in these pictures. Um, they are all the other eukaryotes that are not either an animal, a plant, or a fungus. So they are animal-like sometimes if they're heterotrophic consumers and they're mobile. Sometimes um, some protists are plant-like in the fact that they're autotrophic. Some protists are fungi-like because they're heterotrophic decomposers. So we kind of wonder how long the protist kingdom will actually be around. Uh, because it actually it has a lot of uh, qualities of many different kingdoms, and so some of these protists could actually fit into other different kingdoms. So if you're just wondering about the classification of humans and what domain and kingdom and everything all the way down um, that they belong, uh, humans actually belong to the domain Eukarya, kingdom Animalia, phylum Chordata, because we have a, uh, a dorsal supporting rod and nerve cord, so that's your, your backbone and your spine, we are in the class Mammalia, order of primates, the Hominidae uh, family, genus is Homo, species is Sapiens. So that's just kind of our whole classification in case you were curious.